I would like now to introduce uh, our keynote uh, speakers who will be uh, giving us uh, each a, a keynote speech and, uh, and informing us more about, uh, about those opportunities and challenges. And uh, they are Mr. Hu Lin Zhao, who is ITU Secretary General, Ms. Doreen Bogdan Martin, who is Director of the Telecommunication Development Bureau, and Mr. Dan Shiblum, who is Chairman of GSR20. So thank you very much. So I will now hand the floor to Mr. Zhao, our first keynote speaker. Thank you. Okay, good afternoon, uh, dear friends. Uh, uh, welcome you to this uh, course session of this uh, 20th uh, edition of GSR. And this GSR comes at a time when the rule of ICT and telecommunication regulators and policy makers has taken center stage in the response to and the recovery from the COVID-19 crisis. But I also like to take this opportunity to appreciate uh, our collective efforts. And our moderator just mentioned that uh, over the last 20 years, uh, we, we had a lot of uh, activities and he showed us that uh, participants and uh, those uh, key experts to uh, work together to debate on the market challenges. But I think that more than that, all of us worked very, very hard. I was there at the first edition of GSI in year 2000. And I did not see my folks photo there, but I saw some uh, uh, photos where I showed myself there. But over the last 20 years, no matter how hard the world suffered from a financial crisis, natural crisis, and some kind of trade crisis, uh, you know, many, many crises. But still the world, uh, you know, still, you know, we developed with uh, ICT uh, services and uh, infrastructures uh, marvelously uh, now available almost everywhere. That is the reason today we profit uh, uh, this uh, marvelous achievement uh, just uh, you know, keeping in mind that uh, nobody could imagine that in 2020 we will suffer this kind of uh, COVID-19 and everybody now is forced under uh, this so-called confinement of COVID-19 and uh, economic life is almost stopped or slowed down and the social life was stopped or slowed down, but people can still survive and even make some kind of good uh, progress and with uh, many you know, ICT applications, you know, people talk to each other, connect to each other. All this cannot be there without the wonderful work of our regulators over the last 20 years. So that I would like to take this opportunity to, you know, to express on behalf of IT management to our family of regulators for your wonderful work. Of course, we understand that it's not always, you know, excitement or happiness and you have suffered a lot uh, you have to work with the private sector and you know, convince them to invest. Uh, you have to create a good environment to attract them. And you have to work with your government to get the support from top, uh, from your colleagues. Uh, sometimes frustrating and sometimes, you know, exciting. But uh, anyhow, I think that uh, if you look at the current situation, you will be proud that uh, our work deserved the world uh, appreciation. So let me just... Uh, Add these uh, few words uh, in, uh, to express uh, my feelings at this moment, uh, 20 years after we created the first edition of GSR in year 2000. It is not by accident that the ITU's initial response to the crisis focused on regulators and policymakers. Not only because uh, for each crisis we have, we have to come to <laughs> our regulators, but here now we have more reasons to come to you. So that uh, you know, we created uh, uh, in March the Global Network uh, Residency Platform, a tool to help our membership address the unprecedented demand faced by communication networks. Since then, REC for COVID has become a place where ICT regulators, policymakers, and stakeholders from over the world can share the best practices and lessons learned. It is this spirit of uh, collaboration that brings us all online here today. So collaboration and collaborative regulation has been steadily gaining momentum. 
reflecting a data-driven world where the line between the ICT sector and the other sectors have become increasingly blurry. IT has experienced this digital transformation firsthand, for sure, with the new players active in different sectors of the economy joining our organization in large numbers and becoming an integral part of our deliberations and discussions. So the challenge is that not everyone is sharing in this transformation far more from far away from it. The latest data from ITU show that uh, today's year 3.6 billion people remain offline with much of the unconnected living in the least developed uh, countries. You know, we had statistics that uh, in least developed countries, uh, broadband connectivity is less than 20%, while the average is already so-called 54%. Now here we have another observations. 54, what does that mean? We get uh, a lot of uh, people connected, but if you look at the development phase, we know that over the last two years, this improvement by adding additional people online slowing down. And we still have 46% not connected yet. The other day in the middle of John and Secretary General of the United Nations, Mr. Gorillas, announced that at the high level panel on the digital uh, you know, transformation, that he wished to see everybody be connected by 2030 with affordable prices. By 2030, we have 10 years to go. We have 10 years, we can do a lot. But we have 10 years, if you calculate uh, the progress we made over the last few years, if we take uh, 2% per year, 36%, you need 23 years. So by 2030, can we achieve that goal? So this is uh, really something quite, uh, quite a challenge. So building back better means uh, making sure that uh, we leave no one behind, no one offline. And hopefully by 2030. I, I also like to share with you <laughs> my answer to these questions. At ITU Telecom 2019, a purpose, people ask me some questions. Ask, Mr. Zhou, can everybody be connected by 2030? I said, I'm afraid it may not be that easy. Because look at the security, uh, actual situation, look at the, uh, you know, the issues. And if that was not that easy, uh, 2019, with the COVID-19, now we may have more challenges. So when, as we look at to the recovery, investment needs in ICT infrastructure are in hundreds of billions of dollars. This is one of the conclusions of ITU's new Connecting Humanity study. As I told the G20 Digital Economy, Economy Ministers a little while ago, mobilizing such levels of funding will require the contributions and collaboration of both private and public sectors. And in particular, the investment from private sector is absolutely important. And approaching ICT investment with a new core of a government ICT investment strategy. So yesterday, I joined uh, Unido and uh, James to, to have an interview. I, I put my famous four eyes, infrastructure investment uh, and uh, innovation and inclusiveness. So when I talked about uh, infrastructure, people understand that. When I talked about uh, investment, I put uh, these uh, figures. I said that these figures are study figures. And when you come to the reality, you may have more challenges. And then the moderator took my <laughs> word saying that, uh, uh, Secretary General, you mentioned that uh, the money is very important. If you have no money, you cannot uh, get, uh, get uh, development. I said, no, 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 be careful. Money is absolutely important. But money is not the only thing. We needed to have uh, innovative, good idea of infrastructure. Uh, and we also have to get uh, good uh, innovative ideas for how can we invest. We need to uh, have a smart uh, investment strategy. We needed to create a good environment to check the investment. So that, or oh, I think that is not that easy, but anyhow, uh, that is a challenge. Too often, the various ministers in our government invest in ICT infrastructure without consulting with each other, in particular, may not even 
consulting with our ICT ministers and the regulators because they get uh, you know, a sponsorship from partners other than ICT industry or other than ICT authorities. And then they do their business with ICT to improve their system. So they may not uh, necessarily come to our experts. So that is uh, uh, you know, causing sometimes uh, uh, duplications and uh, resulting in significant inefficiencies and the resource shortfalls. That is why I have encouraged the health and ICT ministers to work closely together when I joined their uh, meeting of G20 since the beginning of this uh, crisis as uh, short ministers uh, responsible for other sectors of our economies. So ladies and gentlemen, this crisis has uh, demonstrated that ICT is a unifying threat that uh, runs through all aspects of our societies and economies. And our approach to ICT investment must recognize and embrace this reality. So accelerating broadband development is a formidable challenge and opportunity, in particular in those hard to reach areas with no internet access, where topography and uh, demography too often defeat market uh, viability. Investors face many hurdles from high operational and maintenance cost to long cycles of return on investment. So earlier this year, I issued uh, ITU circulator number three because during the Christmas period, I could not <laughs> stay calm after I made uh, that uh, questions at the IT Telecom in September in Hungary, Hungary last year. So that uh, I, I you know, issued this circulator to our members, uh, to our regional regulatory authorities, uh, to uh, sector members, because I recognize that uh, there's an opportunity for us. So we have to face these uh, challenges and uh, problems, but I believe the cost of not solving them will be even higher. So as the UN Secretary General Guterres reminded us often, and particularly recently, only by working together can we connect all people by 2030. So the whole parts of the world's economies have shifted to digital platforms. This will require regulators to work with investors, including operators, to create the conditions for a better investment environment, but also require us to work with other ministries, with other uh, you know, government uh, authorities to meet the needs and expectations of the unconnected with more connectability, but also with more safety, better digital skills, and empower improved affordability. At stake is the ability of regulators and policymakers everywhere to unlock investment, to support growth, jobs, and innovation, but also to save lives and the future relevance of ICT regulators in this increasingly connected world. I want to thank all those who have been instrumental in the enduring success of the Global Symposium for Regulator, and uh, particularly you know, to my colleague, uh, uh, Director of PDT, Ms. Doreen Bogdan Martin. The collective uh, learnings of the past 20 years have prepared us to face the future with confidence. So I look forward to our discussions and this year's GSR based practice guidelines, and I wish you all a very successful GSR 20. I thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Zhao. I'd like to now hand the floor to Ms. Doreen Bogdan-Martin, Director of the Telecommunication Development Bureau for ITU. Doreen, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Max, and, and thank you, Secretary General, for those inspiring words. Uh, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, I'm really delighted to join you today to kick off the core program of GSR 20 sessions which represents the culmination of an extensive program of consultative events, beginning with the GSR leadership debate on the 30th of June. 
that the 20th anniversary of our Global Symposium for Regulators should have fallen in a year of unprecedented global turmoil and disruption might be considered a misfortune. I would consider it auspicious. Auspicious because 20 years, after 20 years of lobbying for the vital importance of digital networks to the development of our societies and our economies, we finally have the full attention of leaders around the world. The COVID crisis has thrown digital technology sharply into the spotlight and we may never again benefit from the intense focus governments are now according to digital networks and services. COVID has brought with it the universal realization as we enter the post-digital age, it's no longer just about technology. The ICT sector now underpins every other economic activity. In many countries, it's also the foundation for a host of essential social services and a vital driver of economic growth. Throughout the developing world, digital technologies can serve as a powerful transformational catalyst that overturns chronic development roadblocks and finally puts vital services like education, healthcare, and access to information within reach of billions. Dear colleagues, they say that some have greatness thrust upon them. I believe the ICT regulatory community is at just such an inflection point because our work over the next few months and years will be absolutely instrumental in defining the new normal for a post-COVID world. Looking back over the archives when we organized the very first GSR, months after my first daughter was born, I was struck by the words of the then director of the BDT who said, if ICT sector reform is the key to bridging the digital divide, then regulators are the architects of that bridge building project. I think that very vivid image has never been as pertinent as it is at this juncture. In the midst of the COVID crisis, with digital connectivity finally occupying its rightful place at the top of every nation's national agenda, your work as regulators and as policymakers has become absolutely critical. Getting the policy mix right to enable growth in networks and services has never mattered so much. Fifth generation collaborative ICT regulatory measures and tools are the new frontiers for regulators and policymakers as they work towards maximizing the opportunity afforded by digital transformation. Employing these measures and tools will help ensure that more people in more countries can reap the benefits of the digital economy, improving people's lives at a pace and scale never seen before. Ladies and gentlemen, as always, over the next three days, we will be looking at some of the burning issues facing regulators in an ever more complex and interdependent ecosystem. We will have lightning sessions on a number of major developments and achievements, including the Reg for COVID platform that we worked with so many of you over the past several months at the start of the COVID crisis. We'll also see the launch of our brand new digital regulation handbook and online platform which is the fruit of a collaborative effort between ITU and the World Bank. We'll also hear as the Secretary General about the forthcoming Connecting Humanity Report that was developed in collaboration with Saudi Arabia in its role as this year's G20 president. And of course, the outcomes of our heads of regulators executive roundtable that was just held, uh, our regional regulatory associations meeting that was held yesterday, our industry meeting also held yesterday, and all of the events over the summer months that were held on a regional basis. Dear colleagues, I think we all agree that GSR discussions and debates have always been extremely compelling. But this year, they take on a new amplitude because much is going to be asked of us post-crisis as governments start to pick up the pieces and strive to build back better. Our ICT policy and regulatory frameworks will need to be fit for purpose. They will need to be up to date, flexible, incentive based and market driven to support digital transformation across sectors and across geographical regions. 
In short, they will need to be up to one of the greatest challenges of our time, and that is to leverage the power of digital platforms and infrastructures to build the resilience that we need to protect us against future global emergencies. We must not miss our chance. We must unite. We must unite as the digital ecosystem and seize this unique opportunity to harness the unprecedented tide of political will and to put digital at the heart of our global recovery. And with that, I thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed, Doreen Bogdan-Martin. Dan Sherblum, Chairman of the 20th edition of GSR, the floor is yours. Your Excellencies, Honorable Ministers of ITU Member States, Secretary General of the ITU, Mr. Hulin Zhao, Director of Telecommunications Development Bureau, Mrs. Doreen Bogdan-Martin, Elected Officials of the ITU, Distinguished Delegates, Ladies and gentlemen, friends and colleagues, uh, it is my very great pleasure to welcome you all to the Global Symposium for Regulators uh, 2020. As the GSR celebrates this year its 20th edition, we are celebrating 20 years of changing regulatory frameworks, presenting an updated 20th anniversary edition of the ICT Regulation Handbook, as well as concrete guidance on steps that regulators can take to have meaningful connectivity for digital transformation. I think the importance of the GSR 20 is clearly shown by the hundreds of delegates that have registered and signed up and are present at this time. It's very impressive to see the numbers. Uh, the GSR was, as you know, established to strengthen and stabilize regulatory frameworks across the globe and to be a global meeting place where regulators and policymakers can discuss solutions to the very many challenges uh, that continuously arise in the sector. And during the ongoing crisis of COVID-19, the importance of inclusive access to the internet for a range of vital issues such as health, education, economy, has become evidently clear, clearer than ever. The challenges uh, during the summer and before that spring with COVID has truly brought our community together. And I think we have the opportunity to continue to come together and use the new regulatory approaches to accelerate the inclusive growth of ICTs. We hope that the GSR 20 will provide all of you with the opportunity to share experiences as well as to collaborate, identify evolving regulatory tools and approaches to bring affordable, safe, secure and trusted connectivity everywhere. Improving the access and use of digital technologies is now perhaps more than ever the key to the achievement of the global goals, be they fighting the pandemic or reaching other global goals, such as the uh, sustainable development goals. I look forward to fruitful discussions and listening to the full lineup of ICT regulators and policymakers that uh, will speak uh, over the next days, ready to share lessons learned and help us all to provide better, more secure, more resilient ICT networks and services. It is really a pleasure to be part of the celebration of the 20th edition, including the launch of the Digital Regulation Handbook and Platform and a GSR leadership debate on how to build and grow after COVID. On behalf of the ITU, on behalf of my own organization, Swedish Post and Telecom Authority, and on behalf of Berek, I sincerely hope that you all find the next three days productive and informative. It is together that we create a valuable GSR best practice guidelines and outcome document on the Global Symposium for Regulators. Uh, and it is uh, during the consultation of this uh, document, your ideas has been put forward. I want to take this opportunity to thank everyone who contributed to that process so much for your contributions. They are indeed very welcome and necessary. And finally, uh, I should also take this opportunity to thank the ITU Secretariat for the professional planning and hosting that they have made so far and that I look forward to continue to follow over the meeting at the first ever virtual global symposium for regulators that takes place at the same time everywhere. And very final word, uh, last but not least at all, thank you all for joining virtually. I wish you the best in the coming days. Be active. Uh, 
and uh, have a very good GSR. Thank you very much.